Close your eyes and focus on your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Don't go skipping off here or there. Just stay right here. Be true to the breath. All the way in, all the way out. Try to be as continuous as possible as you can be as you focus on the breath. Today we're commemorating a John Lee's passing. He died when he was only 54, 55. And then he left a lot behind, this method of breath meditation that we're doing right here. He developed it when he was in the forest and really sick. He walked in three days and got there, and shor shortly after that he had a heart attack. He knew the only way he was going to get out was to walk out. And so he started using his breath energy in his body to heal the heart, to heal all the other parts of the body. And by the end of the rains retreat he was able to walk out, almost fully cured. This is a case of the, as I said, the Ajans putting their lives on the line to learn the Dharma, and then bringing it back for us. So as a sign of gratitude, we practice and we think of them with gratitude. But the best way, of course, to show our gratitude is actually act on it. And he almost died to give this method to us, and so we should give it some importance really give ourselves to it, be true to it. And when you're being true to the practice, you're also being true to yourself. This is a theme that a John Lee would repeat many, many times, is that we all want genuine happiness, but are we true in putting together the causes? If we put in only half measure, do we want just kind of a half measure kind of happiness? Well, no, we want genuine happiness. We want something that's solid and reliable, something that doesn't turn on us. So let's not turn on ourselves. Let's actually put together the causes, be true to the causes. In other words, you're true to your own wish for true happiness. Don't be a traitor to that wish. The world out there has all kinds of other things that they want us to buy and content ourselves with. They tell us, well, really genuine happiness that lies beyond time and space. That's not possible, but you can buy our car, you can buy our, our home, you can buy our appliances. And a lot of times we're willing to content ourselves with that, but we've got to realize there's more to life than just that. Sometimes we have to give up things that we like in order to get something that's of greater value. So when you find yourself presented with that option of something that's for short-term happiness or something for long-term happiness, ask yourself who you're being true to. Are you being true to corporate America? Are you being true to your own desire for a happiness that you can really depend on? Because that desire for happiness is nothing to be ashamed of. Don't think that all desires are bad. The desire for a harmless happiness, that's a good thing. Something you want to follow, something you want to nurture, and something you want to bring into being in your life. And how you do that? Well, by being true. True to that desire, true to the practice. And that way we can reap some of the results that John Lee and the other great Johns reaped from their practice as well, because it was their truthfulness that saw them through. And we can all learn the text, we can all memorize them, we can chant them. We can discuss them, but it's only if you're true to them and true to your own desire for happiness that the results are going to come. Otherwise, they're just words. So ask yourself, what kind of happiness do you want? As John Lee painted the picture of the Buddha one time, asking himself, what kind of happiness do you want? He said, I want only the highest happiness. He okay, took that as his vow, not just as a desire, and now became a vow that that was what he wanted, that's what he's going to do. And he stuck with it all the way through. That's why how he became our Buddha. With the Ajans, it's the same thing. They were true to the practice outside, they became their our Ajans. So are we going to find happiness? Are we going to look for it? Well, it's up to us to be, decide whether we're going to be true to our desires for a true happiness or true to something else. The good thing about the Dharma is that if you're true with it, it's going to be true for you. There's no doubt about that. <laughs>